Hello, Anna. I was Hello. very happy to discover that you had been the person who had been reviewing the book on early detection and early intervention. Your comments were very enthusiastic and constructive. And also your foreword in the book was very lovely. Thank you very much. It was an absolute pleasure. I really enjoyed reading the book and uh, that was the first forward I ever wrote to. So it was a learning curve for me too. But um, so it was, yeah, it was a real pleasure. I, I think um, it would be nice just to ask you a few questions about the book. So I wanted to start by asking you what motivated you to write this book? Yeah, you probably know that I teach quite a lot about early detection and early intervention. And gradually I realized there's the book on these themes is missing. And in particular, a book that starts from neurobiology and then extends to what brain development and potential deviations in these developments may mean for daily life of the child and family. And in addition, what this might mean for guidance of such children and their families. So, I was very happy that an excellent team of colleagues was willing to join in into this writing enterprise. So I would agree, it really does span a very broad uh, area that needed to be pulled together in this way. And, and that was something I really liked about the book. So um, having written it and edited it, what would you say would be your main messages from this book? No, thank you. Yes, main messages are in the first place that the young nervous system with its high plasticity offers opportunities for early intervention, but it also poses challenges to early detection. And related to the latter, it also means that it often takes time before we can diagnose, for instance, cerebral palsy. Of course, we know nowadays that in infants who have been admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit, the combination of neonatal MRI and a general movement assessment at the corrected age of three months is really very helpful in the prediction of cerebral palsy. But the large majority of infants does not start postnatal life in the neonatal intensive care unit. So for them, the situation is different. And the book discusses also the methods that are available for these infants. And that brings me to a third message. Not being able to diagnose at early age does not prevent early intervention. On the contrary, having an infant who is at risk of a developmental disorder means that this infant deserves early intervention. And nowadays, we know that the family is quintessential in early intervention. However, there is quite some discussion on what is the best strategy to approach the family. On the one hand side, we have instruction and teaching, and on the other hand, coaching. The book also discusses this issue. On the other hand, there are quite some things in on which we agree in early intervention. So we have consensus about the fact that Early intervention should be goal-oriented, that it should involve challenging the infant so that the infant tries out its own activities, so there is trial and error learning. We also agree that we only should apply minimally hands-on support, that we should apply the concept of environmental enrichment, and when needed, that we should implement assistive devices from early age onwards. 
Thank you. Those are all really important messages. And um, obviously, that those are just the highlights, and there's a lot more in the book itself. So speaking of reading the book itself, who would you like to be reading this book? Who's the audience? The book is intended for all professionals working in the field of early detection and early intervention of developmental motor disorders. And I'm thinking of pediatricians, developmental and uh, neuropediatricians, child neurologists, pediatric physiotherapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, psychologists, and educationalists. So quite a large variation of professionals. I, I would definitely agree. I also wondered whether um, people who are researching in the field as well would benefit very much from, from, from reading this and understanding how the neuroscience is being applied and how it influences. Um, yes, I uh, totally agree plans. also for people in the research field, yeah. So then my final question, so um, what would you like people to do differently or what would you like to change as a result of um, people reading this book? Yeah. As a teacher or writer, you always would like that people start to reflect. And I would be very happy if colleagues would realize that uncertainty, especially uncertainty about developmental outcome, is part and parcel of the family's life, the families of a child at high risk of a developmental disorders. And so that the families need guidance in particular to also this uncertainty. And this also means that the professionals themselves should be able to cope with this uncertainty. With respect to the early detection, I would hope that all colleagues, after having read the book, would only apply standardized assessments when they assess an infant. With regard to early intervention, I would hope that they all use a family-centered approach and that they focus in their intervention on activities in participation and not on impairments. And last but not least, I really hope that colleagues will reconsider the concept of disability and that they will reframe it or rather relive it as a different ability. Thank you so much for those um, really important messages and, and thoughts on what needs to happen in this field. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you about your book. Okay, thank you. And I really hope that people start to read it and then also implement it 